You know what's really fun? Having your design that you worked on so diligently for so long just stop working in the field. Yeah, that's a party. Okay, I know that's not actually fun at all, but it is something you need to think about when embedding cellular connectivity into your next design. Well, that and a whole lot of other things, including carrier certifications, firmware functionality, and more. So that someday down the line, your design still works the way you intended it to. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Adding cellular capabilities to your next design can be a complicated, time-consuming process. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Alec Yonke from Digi and I chat about how Digi's XB Global Cellular Solutions can help you navigate the complexities of adding cellular connectivity to your next design. We investigate how Digi XB software can help you monitor and manage your connected devices, and how the Digi XB3 cellular ecosystem can help you future proof your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Digi. Hi, Alec. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Yeah, thanks for having me today. Absolutely. Okay, so we're talking about global cellular solutions today. But Alec, what does Digi offer in this realm? Yeah, so Digi has historically provided many cellular solutions from a box product standpoint. Today, I think what we're excited about a new offering is from an embedded standpoint, if you want to embed cellular into your product, we have two new solutions. One that is an XB3 cellular LTM NBIOT product and also an XB3 cellular CAT1 that are there to grow our global cellular family. Fantastic. So can we take a closer look at that LTE CAT1 in more detail? What kind of specs are we looking at here? Yeah, this is an embedded modem that comes in our standard through-hole form factor, so you can easily build it into your product and or replace the cellular component with other RF compatible products like some of our Zigbee and or 900 megahertz products. And the key there is you get cellular connectivity in whatever product you're building in. So this can get you download speeds up to about 10 megabytes per second and upload speeds up to about 5 megabytes per second. So you can take in all of your data, kind of do lots of predictive maintenance and send that up to the appropriate platform and or just take in customer data and be able to get that and push that out to customers in an important way that will show them actionable data rather than just a hodgepodge of mismarked and misused data all over the place. But it's mainly reliable connectivity and being able to get connected. It also comes with Bluetooth BLE 4.2 functionality and some edge compute as well as GNSS on board that module. So what about the LPWA CAT-M solutions you mentioned? What kind of features are included here? Yeah, so this has really nice functionality where you're able to get access to lower power devices. So devices that may be battery powered out in the field or just have lower needs for the data throughput, right? They're only sending data periodically as opposed to kind of a constant stream of data. So some really nice power management and power saving modes are available on this LTM and BIOT product. It does have 2G fallback, so it can connect to some of those historical networks if you're deploying this uh, across a global footprint as well. But then it has that nice edge compute available where we provide many examples that allow you to really build in the power saving capabilities into your product so that you can deploy a product and be sure that it's going to continue to remain connected, but also conserve that battery life for as long as possible. Okay, so can we also talk about the XB software security and services? What all is included in these services? Yeah, so I think the Digi ecosystem and the solutions that we're providing today really provide customers with the comprehensive tool set to go all the way from developing a product to deploying and managing that product in the field. And that's what our tools are meant to help you do as a customer. So in particular... From a development standpoint, we have our new XB Studio tool 
This is kind of a reiteration and a re-release of our XCTU tool that has been very popular for configuring XB devices in the past. This is meant to bring in multiple new aspects to the product. So everything that you loved about XCTU functionality, but also some new functionality, such as integration with our Digital Remote Manager cloud platform. So you aren't just configuring and developing on your modules that are right there next to you, but you can also configure and develop on modules that potentially a team is working on that are actually located remotely and are not right at your hands for access. So really great tool set there for XB Studio that I think customers will love in terms of kind of a revamping of XCTU with some of that new functionality. And I mentioned it there as well, but for remotely monitoring and managing these devices, we have our Digi Remote Manager service, and we will actually be shipping all of these new SKUs that I'm talking about today with one year of Digital Remote Manager included, this is really just showing the confidence that we have in the product and making sure that customers are taking advantage of this. For cellular devices in particular, it's really important to keep those devices updated in terms of the firmware that is actually on the cellular device as the cellular networks, particularly in North America, can be very picky about how devices interact with their network. And this will also help you as a customer to have better connectivity and better reliability for a product. So Digital Remote Manager is really an all-in-one tool to monitor and manage those devices. And then we also offer a couple other things that can help to create a full cellular solution. Uh, we have DigiXB cellular data plans. Uh, today, these come in kind of two different flavors. One is a global offering that is on AT&T and its roaming partners. And then another for North America that is through Verizon. We will also be announcing upcoming soon some further offerings where customers who do not have a preference between either of those two North American carriers can deploy a device and it will connect to whichever carrier is appropriate in the area and also be able to connect anywhere in the globe. So some really great cellular offerings. You can buy these devices with SIMs already pre-inserted. So that part is easy and done for you. And all it takes is, uh, you know, a simple sign up process to make sure that your device is on the network and working. Fantastic. So Alec, what about the Digi XB software you mentioned? What benefits does this software bring to the table? Yeah, so that's a great question, as I think this is really where the Digi value add comes in, is in this software in particular. I mentioned earlier, we've been creating and doing cellular products for going on 16 or so years now in the uh, industrial router realm. So basically, what we've done here is we've taken all of those findings and what we've learned and created a really simple API and AT command set for configuring the module as well as doing actions using the cellular module. So typically using a cellular module, a customer will go ahead and open a TCP secure socket connection, send a message over that network and then close that connection. This can be a series of long and very complicated AT commands on that cellular module. And these are also unique to the individual cellular module manufacturer. So whether that is Ublox, Telet, Quectel, whoever, if you're working on those modules, as you're moving from one manufacturer to another, you have to completely adapt your tool set to that individual manufacturer's AT command set. With XB, we abstract you out from this and the AT commands and the APIs that we offer will be the same no matter what the underlying cellular modem is. So the cellular modem is really just a tool to be able to provide the correct speeds and connectivity options for you as a customer. And you can implement whichever one you want in that XB through hole form factor. And then our tool set will determine kind of what you're trying to do, whether you're trying to open that socket connection, it will send the appropriate data and it'll send it over the cellular network to your appropriate endpoint. So this is really key and it abstracts the customer themselves from having to learn those really complicated AT command sets and really just focus on your expertise. All right. So I'm really interested, Alec, in this XB Studio. Can you give me some more details about that part of the ecosystem? 
Yeah. So in the past, we've had multiple different tools, including XCTU, MicroPython, PyCharm IDE plugin, and Bluetooth libraries. And these have all been kind of separate tools that our customers could use and implement. But oftentimes we found that customers would use individual aspects of those tools, but not necessarily be aware of the full ecosystem. So XP Studio is really meant to bring in that full ecosystem to the customer in one single tool. And it is a free download and it can work with any of our new XP cellular modules. They can do open source MicroPython code development. They can do Bluetooth mobile app development, and then they can do everything that they've been used to with XCTU, right? They can view the file system on the device. They can use our frames generator to really quickly and easily generate those API frames that I talked about earlier that make our software easy to use. And this is all built into one single intuitive platform. So it's really how we're going to be moving forward in the support of our XB products of the future. Fantastic. Now, we definitely need to talk about security as well, right, Alec? Can you walk me through some of the security aspects of this solution? Absolutely. Given uh, the importance of security to many of Digi customers, we really do rely on implementing the Digi Trust Fence into all of our platforms. And XB Cellular is definitely included in this as well. In particular, we do include a secure element chip on our device that allows for key storage for secure boot on the device. So in particular, what this means to the customer is they can be sure that a specific firmware that is meant to be intrusive will not be able to be loaded onto the device. The device will actually detect that intrusive firmware and revert back to a standard Digi firmware that you previously had loaded on. So this secure element for secure boot is very key. It also allows us to do encryption, uh, AES-256 encryption on all data that is transmitted from this device and allows you to do things such as create protected MicroPython files so that if someone gains local access to the device, they do not have access to your own IP and MicroPython that you created. That may include passwords and other things you don't want them to get. And then it allows for bi-directional TLS communication. So your own cloud that you use, whether it's Azure, AWS, or any other one, allows you to create that bi-directional communication in a very secure way that you can be sure that if this data is ever intercepted, it will not be readable to that person who's intercepting the data. Great. Now... Alec, you also earlier mentioned that every XB3 cellular SKU shipped from Digi includes that one year of Digi Remote Manager. So what's all included in the Digi Remote Manager? Yeah, I think I would break it into kind of multiple different categories. Really, I'd say there's four actions that our customers need to do to manage a cellular device successfully out in the field. And Managing a device means it's going to remain connected on the network and still contribute data in a reliable manner to your endpoint, right? So in order to do this, you need to keep four things updated and managed on these devices. So this is the XB firmware that's on the device. This is how you can implement new features and any bug fixes that may come out periodically. And this also includes the XB modem firmware. So this is the cellular module modem firmware. This is what I talked about earlier. That's very important to the carriers in how this device actually interacts with their cellular towers. So these can be very important and actually range in importance from the carriers actually telling customers that they must update this modem firmware in particular instances in order to stay on the network. The last two items that allows for update of is the configuration of the module. So if you have any configuration items that you need to update after deploying the device, you can do that via Digi Remote Manager and also allows you to do file management. So if you're using that edge intelligence and deploying updated MicroPython scripts, you can use Digi Remote Manager to do that. And it's important to note that all of these actions can be done either one at a time or in large groups up to thousands of devices can be updated at one time. So it's a single click 
to update many devices. This really integrates and makes all the devices easy to manage even after they've been deployed out to the field. It also allows for a monitoring platform. So we do provide health metrics on this device that can help you to monitor if there's cellular signal degradation or even just how much data is my device using. We can monitor this and send this up to Digital Manager with easy ways for the end customer to go and allow for alerts to be created, such as maybe I'm using too much data this month, or maybe my device has a cellular signal level that's dropped below my accepted standards. So it creates a really nice way to monitor those devices as well as update and manage them. So Alec, getting the right certifications is crucial for these kind of applications, right? How can Digi help me here? Yeah, that's an area where I believe that Digi has a true leg up on all the competition here in terms of a true embedded smart modem with pre-certified and device certifications on those modules. With each of these products that I've talked about here today, we get FCC certifications, we get IC Canada certifications, we also get certifications for Mexico, Japan, and Brazil standard out of the box. So as a customer receives these modules, they'll be able to ship and send these devices into any of those locations based on our RF certification testing that we've already done. Essentially, it becomes a paperwork exercise for the customer and a very, very small one in order to get those parts into those countries in the future. For example, in the United States, you must have FCC certification. So you must just fill out an FCC Part 15B filing and fill out the appropriate paperwork there, which amounts to about one page worth of items just telling which product you are shipping into the country. And this is common throughout the world. So Alec, we also need to talk about carrier certifications, right? We need to keep those in mind. Absolutely. So for companies that are deploying products specifically into North America, so the U.S., Canada, and Mexico, these carriers often require carrier certification in order to get your devices onto the network in the first place. Digi has a commitment to release all of our products with these carrier and device certifications. And with this embedded smart modem, you can put this into your product and that end device certification will carry on through to your individual product. We get this with AT&T and Verizon in the US, as well as upon customer requests and requirements for other carriers such as Rogers, TELUS and Bell in Canada or the AT&T affiliates that exist in Mexico as well. Okay, so Alec, if my audience wants to get started designing a cellular application, what should they keep in mind? Yeah, so you want to think about the lifetime of a product, right? It's important when you're going through this to think about what kind of expertise that your team particularly has and how that may play into how you manage a product throughout its lifetime. So cellular networks typically go through cycles of update about once every 10 years. That's when we recently made the transition from 3G to LTE. And, you know, we're now in the transition period from 4G LTE over to 5G. So with this, it's important to note not just what product am I designing and what am I trying to accomplish today? But how can I make sure that I'm able to accomplish this using this same design in the future? Digi XB Cellular product is really how you can keep this advantage and not have to go back and do very complex software rework that can take many months and or go redo certifications as well as doing hardware redesign there as well. With Digi, you just need one simple imprint on your board for that through-hole form factor, and you will be able to future-proof your application and continue to use the same software that you have using our API, which will never change, and will not have to redesign your hardware or software and or go through certifications in the future. So I think it's just important to note what are you trying to accomplish now, but how long are we trying to solve this and what are we looking toward in the future? That makes sense. Now, beyond the hardware, there are a lot of different design considerations to keep in mind when it comes to these kind of applications, right? 
Absolutely, there is. So many times when a customer is going and looking at creating a cellular product, you know, they may initially look at that low hardware cost to begin with and see that as the best solution. Key things to keep in mind as you're looking at that is that down the line maintenance of line tasks and everything that's included in that in order to keep your device up and running as well as redesign. So, you know, when you're designing with an embedded modem, you have to keep in mind, how can I get to market quickest? Oftentimes it is, you know, you and your competitor are both going to try and release this product. With XB Cellular products, we really help customers to get to market quickly. We help them to solve those RF design challenges. So if you don't have a team of RF design engineers working through those FCC and other world certifications, like I talked to earlier, can be very complicated. I've mentioned it before, but there's a really complex AT command set. I mean, these manuals are truly thousands of pages long for each of these cellular modems. The Digi user guide is about 80 pages long. And then that just leads into lots of things like certification testing that we do for you on this product and all the expensive test equipment that's needed to be able to do that. It's also important as you're doing maintenance of line on these products to have security and vulnerability monitoring. So you can let Digi take over that for you versus having to do it yourself. And then the changing technologies and carriers that exist and are out there make it a very complex environment. So it's important to future proof to which having that XB form factor and using our API can help you to do. All of these things go into a big bucket that is going to be the low hardware cost as the tip of the iceberg. And what lies underneath is truly the larger bucket in the end. That makes sense. So, Alec, if someone in my audience has used the original XB in a previous design, why should they move to XB3? What does XB3 buy them as an engineer? My recommendation is definitely to move to the new products. Customers that have either been on some of our 3G products in the past, those products are basically going end of life due to the fact that those networks are no longer supported by the carriers themselves. These new products have a larger cellular band coverage. What this means for the customer is they're able to send this device and ensure it will have connectivity in a larger set of carriers and a larger set of countries across the globe. It also has a 2G, 3G fallback. So the more developed areas such as North America, that will not be applicable. But if you have a product that you're shipping across regions of Europe or regions of the APAC area, you know, 2G and 3G may still be very alive and well there today. So this may be critical in order to get connectivity in those locations. That is something that did not exist on our previous XB cellular modules. These new modules also all come with GNSS capabilities included. So you can get GPS coordinates no matter where the module is at. And then there are some other benefits such as specific variant of the LTM and BIOT that actually has lower power consumption. So for those customers that are on battery powered applications, that could be very key. And then I think it's just important to note Really low to no software and hardware redesign should be required for those customers. So because they selected that XB footprint, they are already future proof and they can feel free to move to these and not have to burden their design teams. All right. So what about the SKUs for the XB3? So I think it's important to note the structure of the XB3 cellular SKUs and how they work. So the first part of the SKU will be XB3 for all production level modems. We do have dev kits that are out there and will be shipping shortly that you can buy through your appropriate channel partners. These start with an XK3. And then the next part of the name implies what part of the modem you are looking at. So for the LT Cat 1 Global, that is G1. And for the North America, that is N1. And then all XB Cellular products will have the next portion, which is dash UT. This stands for our through-hole form factor, which all of these devices come in, as well as the U.FL connector for your cellular, as well as GNSS antennas. And then the last piece of the SKU is if it ends in dash 001, this is a device that ships without a SIM. 
I talked to some of these cellular data plan services that we offered earlier in the presentation. If you'd like these products shipped to you with the SIM included, you can select the Dash 101 for AT&T SIM included or Dash 102 for Verizon SIM included. That third portion of the SKU, the G1 for the Global Cat 1 and the N1 for the North America Cat 1, that will be replaced and be different in the LTEM as it does have a different cellular module. So in the LTEM, that middle portion would be GM2 for our global variant and GM1 for our low power variant. This is a global offering as well, but it's meant more for battery powered devices and applications. Excellent. Well, Alec, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Awesome. Thank you so much. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.